First, we'll create a thing. A thing represents some device. I'm going to be running a Node.js application on my laptop that will represent a thing. To create that thing, I'll click on this Create a Thing button. I'll give it a name. I'll just say PC Laptop App. Now I can add some attributes, and attributes are kind of like metadata that are associated with your thing. So you might add something, for instance, like the installation date if it were a piece of equipment, or its latitude and longitude if it were a device that was geo-positioned. For this example, I'll just say, since this is my PC laptop, I'll say model, and I'll say M6600. And I can add more if I want to, but for now, that's all I'm going to put. PC Laptop App. Then click Create. So now if I go back to my things, I'll see that I do now have this new thing called PC Laptop App. Now on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see some metadata to describe your newly created thing. The name, the REST API endpoint, the MQTT topic, which is basically $AWS Things, PC Laptop App, Shadow, and then Update. And we'll be working with these topics in a moment. Now, we'll be getting into what's called shadow and how to update a shadow. And we'll actually have an example to describe how to work with a shadow. But for purposes of this exercise, we first just need to create a certificate and then attach a policy which gives this thing access to the uh, IoT service and whatever methods that I want to be able to provide it access to. So the next step that we'll need to do is to create a certificate. We can do that by clicking on this Create a Certificate button. Now, there are various ways you can associate a certificate with your thing. The easiest way to get started is just to hit this, you know, one-click certificate create. And then if you go ahead and select this activate button, then that certificate that you just create will be active from the moment that you create it. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And what it will do is basically generate a public key, private key, and a certificate. The only two you really need in order to configure your device or your thing is the private key and the certificate. So I'm going to go ahead and download those. I'll go ahead and download all of them. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up a new folder. And I'm going to create a folder off of my root level here. I'll just call it certificates. And then inside of that folder, I will first go get my downloads. One, two, three. And I'll copy them over to that certificates directory. Okay, now there's one other, what's called a root CA file that I'll need in order to make the connection. And you're going to actually need to get that from the documentation. So I'll go over to the documentation for Amazon AWS IoT. I'll look for the section on security and identity. I can click on the authentication in AWS IoT. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a link. Let's see, where is it? Right here. Right here under server authentication. It says, device certificates allow AWS IoT to authenticate devices to ensure your device is communicating with AWS IoT and not another server impersonating AWS IoT. Copy the VeriSign root CA certificate onto your device. So I'll go ahead and just save link as, and then I'll put that into that same folder that I just created. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and give this a different name. I'm going to call it root CA dot and I'm going to go ahead and change the extension to CRT. You could leave it as PEM, but I'm going to change it to CRT since one of the applications we'll be downloading and doing an exercise with. That's what it's called. Now let's click, click Save. So now that I have my certificate created and downloaded, I want to associate it with my thing that I just created. So I'll go over to the certificate that I just created. You can see the data on here. And then once it's selected, you notice that it already says active, and that's because when I created it, pre-selected that activate select box. So I don't need to go through that step. I just need to associate it to my thing. So it says attach a thing. And the thing name was PC Laptop App. And click on attach. Now, this doesn't really do anything more than you know provide some bookkeeping. What it's really going to allow your 
thing to connect to the service is going to be having those certificates configured on the client application. So that's just kind of a bookkeeping uh, process to kind of keep things organized. Now, the other thing I want to do is to create a policy that I can uh, attach to my certificate, giving permissions to that thing that has the certificate access to certain IoT method calls. So I'll go ahead and create a policy. And give it a name. So I'll say PC laptop app policy. Now, if you click on this thing called action, uh, the easiest way to do this is just to do an IoT. And you notice once I put in the either, it'll actually pick all the various things that the policy statement will allow. I'm going to go ahead and just do everything just by doing a colon star wildcard. And for the resource, I'm just going to use star as well. So basically that's going to give this thing permission to access any of those services, whether it's published or subscribed to or and all resources on the IoT service in my account. So then I'll go ahead and click on the add statement button. And if everything looks good, I'll go ahead and click create. So now that I have my certificate, I'll need to attach it to the policy. So I have that selected and I'll do under actions, select attach a policy. And in here it was called PC laptop app policy. And now I've attached it. So now if I go back to my certificate, you'll see that it's attached to both my PC laptop app policy and my PC laptop app. Now, attaching the policy does actually do something functionally. It gives permissions to that certificate to perform the actions delineated or as allow statements within that policy.